Thank you, Alistair. Um, is that okay for volume? Is, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, that's great, thanks. Yeah, um, I suppose I should say a little bit more about my background, um, as everybody else has this morning. Uh, my, my background is really that I started off very much as a harvesting forester, and, and my background for a considerable period of time was in timber harvesting and associated haulage, um, uh, both in the, in the south of Scotland, but also on the west coast. So some of you I recognise from a long time ago. Uh, nice to see some faces I haven't seen for a long time. Um, so I'd like to think I've got a reasonable understanding of some of the issues that I've been touched on today, but specifically what I'm going to talk about is the challenge of new woodlands in respect to timber haulage. And I think that as a topic area is a very interesting thing to reflect on. And as Councillor Henderson mentioned in his introduction this morning, um, one of the things I think we'd all probably recognise is, is that when a lot of the forests were established that we're now working in, little or no thought was given to how on earth it was all going to come out. And, uh, you know, the world's moved on um, and it's become a more significant issue we need to reflect on when we think about new woodlands. So the background to the challenge is that the Scottish Government has a very strong commitment to woodland expansion in Scotland as part of its uh, climate change plan. And we've started to see some real success with that in terms of the amount of hectares that's actually getting planted. The targets we have um, for the foreseeable future are 10,000 hectares of new woodland per annum, rising to 15,000 by 2024. So quite ambitious targets, and they're certainly more significant levels of planting than we've seen since really sort of into the sort of late 80s and into the early 90s. So it's, it's been a considerable period of time since we were planting at that sort of level. And the other thing that's, that's of relevance, particularly in respect to timber transport, is there's a much greater emphasis on productive woodlands as a significant component of that um, mix. And obviously that gives rise to questions around the timber transport aspects associated with those woodlands. So far, um, we've been quite successful uh, in terms of... I'm noticing I'm getting a bit of feedback here. Is that okay for everybody? Yeah. yeah. Um, We've been quite successful in the level of activity we've achieved in Scotland over the last few years. Um, to date, we've approved almost 18,500 hectares of new woodland, and a fair proportion of that is productive commercial woodland. But that gives rise to the questions around how it's all going to come out. We want to see good quality, productive mixed woodlands like the sort of example I've shown in the photograph there, but we recognise that comes with challenges. So the issues, I'm sure you all understand fairly clearly, is that there's a recognition that commercial woodlands place a potential pressure on the public road network, and we all understand the kind of pressure that's come out of that. In terms of dealing with a legacy issue, and I would call it a legacy issue in terms of dealing with woodlands where these issues weren't properly reflected on at the time when they were planting, we've got a pretty well established methodology that's evolved through the development of timber transport groups and the approaches that, you know, the cooperative and partnership approaches that have been touched on already this morning about how some of the solutions have been developed to facilitate that timber to come out. <coughs> the, um, but the issue that I think we need to reflect on is what do we do going forward? When we're thinking about new woodlands, um, we're thinking about woodland creation, um, we need to think about the context of timber transport in a way that we didn't when we planted woodlands before. From a regulated point of view, it comes under um, the environmental impact assessment that we have to screen all new woodland proposals against, and we have to reflect on the significance of the timber transport and the impact that, that might have. One of the points I really want to emphasise here, and I think it's absolutely vitally important that we do recognise this, is it's perceived that this sector made mistakes in the past by not considering these issues when these woodlands were planted previously. And it's probably one of the single biggest things that when we consult with the public on new woodlands that they always raise is, what about the timber lorries, what about the timber transport? There's a very clear expectation that that is properly addressed. In the days of us sort of going, oh well, it doesn't matter, it'll be 40 years time and by then, you know, everything will be fixed. You know, the answer was, in the, back, in, the, in the old days was, oh, don't worry, the time it comes out, we'll go be on hoverboards and, you know, it won't be a problem. You know, the technology will move on the extent we won't need the roads, it'll be fine. And of course, you know, that isn't what's actually happened. So therefore, from a regulating point of view, we have to consider the suitability of the, of the road network to 
sustain the likely long-term impacts that of timber generation that will come from the woodland. And that is a material consideration of whether we, we think they're appropriate to approve or not. I've just picked out an example um, of an area, and this is in the south of Scotland, but I think it's pretty representative of a lot of, a lot of potential areas across uh, rural and upland Scotland. This is an area that, in a lot of respects, has huge potential for new woodlands. It's an area that is not particularly constrained in environmental terms. Uh, the site suitability and conditions are pretty good for commercial forestry. But it's constrained by the fact that it's basically serviced by a single track, non-engineered really road, and there also happens to be a, a, a small bridge with a weight restriction on this route as well. But that probably is probably the single biggest constraint to that, that area being suitable um, for use for new woodland creation. And there's probably thousands and thousands of hectares of ground in that particular glen. That, that could come forward. And I think we need to recognise that there's a uh, significant pressure on um, the whole sort of rural land use model at the moment in Scotland because of the likely changes that might come about as a result of support mechanisms through Brexit and such things. So there's an awful lot of landowners at the moment and, and land managers really thinking hard about what they're doing with land and the opportunities. And when they do that, forestry is one of the things they certainly reflect on. So we need to think about this is an issue and how we address it as a sector and how we best um, move this forward. It's just another shot, similar kind of scenario. It's a, you know, basically in a lot of ways an area that's right for commercial forestation, but the road's a real, a real constraint here. Before I get on to talking about some of the ideas that I would put forward um, that the sector need to think about in terms of making, you know, developing solutions for this, I think one of the things we need to think about is that at the moment the experience is quite mixed. So if you're an agent uh, or an owner that wants to explore the possibilities for a new woodland, and, and it may or may not be the case that the roads are constrained to that. There isn't really an established way to go about, you know, identifying how you work out whether it's an issue or not. It's very variable across the country. It's even very variable within individual local authority areas in terms of the kind of response you're likely to get, the clarity of it, and indeed the logic of it at times about whether it's a good idea to go forward with a scheme or not. And we haven't really established appropriate methodologies to deal with that. One of the things I think, um, as a sector, and as timber transport groups and timber transport forum, we need to think about is whether we don't uh, look to develop a more consistent mechanism for people that are interested in doing new woodland creation to be able to get quick, clear and consistent answers about whether roads are appropriate for use and if they are constrained, on what basis they're constrained. There's good practice out there. There are, there are areas where that's working well, but there's other areas where it doesn't work well at the moment. And I think there's a significant degree of inconsistency I think, particularly in respect to the role of the Timber Transport Forum and the Timber Transport Groups, I think it's a key thing for us to share that knowledge and experience and develop more consistent systems for people to be able to ask those questions and get consistent answers back about what the potential is. So that's the first thing I would suggest as a kind of discussion point. The second thing is the answers to when there is a problem. As far as existing woodlands are concerned, it's the case that over the last decade there's been a suite of solutions that have been developed and some of those have been touched on this morning already about how we solve the problems when we want to get the timber out next week or next year and what are the kind of mechanisms we can use. But in terms of considering the issue for new woodlands, the sort of solutions that might be appropriate is a bit more challenging because you get into this debate around do you do something now even though the impact's not going to manifest itself for a long period of time, but then if you don't do something now, how do you ensure that anything ever gets done about the issue? So I think there's a, a piece of work to be done there to think about what are the sort of solutions that we can develop in partnership with the local authorities and the timber transport groups about if we do identify it as a constraint in some way, but we all recognise it's actually an area that in other, for other reasons we think actually has got a huge amount of potential for new woodlands, how do we go about coming up with a satisfactory solution? And I think the follow-on element to that is to reflect on whether the sector, the roads authorities and government need to think about whether we start to look at the, these issues on a more strategic scale and consider what sort of interventions might be justified 
We've already got a fairly well established logic strategically to deal with these issues looking at existing woodlands through strategic timber transport fund. But it may well be the case we need to think about other opportunities to try and facilitate and make interventions in these areas to create opportunities for you know, fairly significant areas of woodland to come forward, which at the end of the day is a core Scottish Government objective. That's all I had planned to say in presentation terms, because I was conscious of the time was quite tight and I didn't want to overrun. But, uh,